Go back 70 years, before we had antibiotics. People died from simple wounds. Pneumonia was untreatable, as was syphilis. Possibly 10% of the population had it. Syphilis used to kill more people every year, year in, year out, than HIV did in its worst ever year. Uh, and it did that for 400 years, back in 1908. One in eight babies were said to be dying of syphilis in Melbourne. Could these pre-antibiotic days return? This was a worry 20 years ago when I did my first story on drug resistance. The fact is that today bacterial infections are on the increase because the bacteria are developing resistance to our antibiotics. The problem is over the last few decades these drugs have been overused and sometimes even misused and now we're paying the price. Despite our knowledge of the problem then, there's been little progress. Sadly, since then, things have got a whole lot worse. The number of deaths from antibiotic-resistant bugs has gone up, and the variety of bacteria that are now resistant to our antibiotics has increased as well. The thing that's raising eyebrows at the moment is the prospect of super gonorrhea. We're getting to the stage now where we have to think gonorrhea may not be treatable with antibiotics. The prospect of having an, an untreated sexually transmitted infection like gonorrhea is a real worry. Jason. Hey, Come here. Jason has come to Melbourne's sexual health clinic. So how can I help today, Jason? Uh, well, I think I might have, well, I'm pretty sure I've got gonorrhea. So. What, what makes you say that? Uh, kind of itchiness in my penile area, and I've had it before. A bit of pus dis uh, discharge, and last time it was a lot worse, so I thought I'd get on top of it. I know it's only a couple of pills, so... Un unfortunately, we've progressed from tablets to injections now, so it'll have to be an injection. Mm. And unfortunately, it's a little bit uncomfortable. That's OK. Given with a bit of local anaesthetic, so it might not be too bad. It's a needle rather than pills because gonorrhea is now resistant to all antibiotic tablets. So for gonorrhea, we've now got to the stage where we have one particular strain, H041, where we've only got one antibiotic that kind of works, and even that's not effective. It's this, keftriexone. So what happens when that doesn't work anymore? Uh, you're screwed, pardon the pun. So, so, so we have no therapy left. And in 2011, in a sex worker from Japan, they isolated a of trioxone resistant gonorrhea. So no antibiotics worked. Now, Japan may seem far away, but the world is a very small place these days. Sydney is a popular destination for international travellers. Indeed, almost three million of them visit here every year. Now, it's fantastic that the world loves to see our beautiful city, but there is a downside. The modern boom in international travel means that if a superbug pops up somewhere in the world, it's not long before it's here. And a rogue Japanese strain is now here, as well as other cities around the world. You know, there, there's every possibility that within a couple of years that, you know, that strain of the organism could take over. Untreatable gonorrhea is not a nice prospect. It can cause infertility in women, and blindness, even in babies born to infected mothers. It can also spread through the body to the heart and bones. The bacteria are particularly clever at getting around our defences. The, the one thing that gonorrhea is very good at is developing resistance mutations. One of its tricks is being a really fast breeder. Yeah, bacteria love to have sex. It's a, it's a party all the time. They mutate, they adapt, and therefore they evolve. And these bugs have a million times the mutating potential that we have. They go through so many generations so fast. Also, for decades, we've known about their breeding tricks. These bacteria can also take ready-made drug-resistant genes from other bacteria and insert them in their own genetic makeup. And they're ingenious little bugs. The genes are on little circles of DNA called plasmids. So while we're having sex, um, the bacteria are having sex, and they're transferring these genes between each other. Their defense against antibiotics has also been known for a long time. They use a tiny pump. 
When the antibody goes in, the bacteria actually pump it back out again and stop it working. If so much has been known for so long, how have we got to the point where we're facing super gonorrhea? Well, new antibiotics are slowly being developed. But sadly, there's no great profit in it for drug companies. And even new antibiotics will eventually be overcome because bacteria are just so good at adaption. But there is another solution, and it's very simple, yet it seems exceedingly difficult to put in place. And that's to change human behaviour. After all, human behaviour has caused the rise and fall of sexually transmitted diseases over the years. Take crabs. These once common pubic lice are now very rare because of today's fashion of waxing off pubic hair. The Brazilian is deforesting the crab's habitat. Through mass production methods, America is continually increasing its output of penicillin, the new drug that affects almost miraculous cures. And another behavioural change came in the 1940s with the discovery of penicillin, which could treat syphilis. Syphilis was a major killer in the world and essentially syphilis was so nasty and so fatal that it kept the brakes on people. You know, people minimised their extramarital and commercial sex. When penicillin made the great pox easily curable, according to one theory, people became more sexually promiscuous and that led to the rise of other STDs. Things like HIV, which in fact had been around for a half a century already, suddenly took off, uh, and as did the other infections. Ironically, the eventual rise of HIV in the 1980s led to a reduction in syphilis. Always use condoms. Always. You know, gay men started practicing safe sex. Sex workers in Australia managed to start rolling condoms onto their clients for the first time in history. So many sexually transmitted infections went away. Syphilis, for example, went away and gonorrhea became quite uncommon. But people's behaviour has changed yet again. These days we've got really good therapy for HIV. People don't really die from HIV AIDS anymore because we've got good drugs. So I don't think um, the next generation sees sexually transmitted disease as a death sentence or something very scary. With fewer people practising safe sex, STDs are rising again. In about 2005, having had no syphilis for years, we suddenly saw an increase in syphilis in men of sex with men. And that was a phenomenon that's been observed all over the world. Gonorrhea is up too, and with it, drug resistance. Can behaviour be changed again? to protect us from drug-resistant STIs. Well, Basil Donovan has a simple idea based on what's happening in Asia. A lot of antibiotic-resistant bugs first appear in this part of the world because antibiotics are not tightly controlled. They can even be bought off the street without prescription. A lot of bar girls or sex workers actually take prophylactic antibiotics so they'll get up every morning and drop a capsule. Now, certainly in the short term, that does actually reduce the chances of catching something. But what it does guarantee is if they do catch something, it's going to be a doozy. To reduce drug-resistant disease brought back to Australia, Basil's idea is to hand out condoms at airports. He's even done some trials, starting in Sydney's Martin Place. And pretty well everyone we handed out in Martin Place finished up in the bin around the corner. We did the same out at Sydney Airport. Went and checked the bin and there wasn't a single condom in the bin. <laughs> everyone kept their condom, which I thought was telling. But we can also do more with technology. David Wiley is developing a genetic test for drug resistance that can be given in every case of gonorrhea. What we're actually hoping to do with the DNA-based methods is that through the possibility of being able to test just about any gonorrhea-positive sample for those particular strains, then hopefully we can also contain those strains to stop them from spreading. And of course, there's the old message. We have to stop squandering our antibiotics. 
We've only had 60, 70 years of this golden age of antibiotics and already we're getting to the stage now where many scientists and many clinicians and, and GPs are worried in 20 years' time we may have lost this really precious natural resource. Meanwhile, Jason's learned his lesson the hard way and has some very simple advice. Stick a condom on. Let's hope in another couple of decades we're not covering the same story.